Thank you, everyone. So tonight's uh, webinar is titled Decay in Oral Hygiene in the Aging Population. If you've been in dentistry for very few years, it could be two or three years, you may have noticed that uh, the patients that we're seeing, uh, you're seeing an older population. Uh, we're going to talk about that, but uh, I would like to take care of some, this, some uh, information first. This is my email address. Please do, do not hesitate or ever hesitate. If you have any questions, uh, please email me. Um, I enjoy that uh, at any time. Uh, I put that invite out there because we all learn. Uh, we wanna make our profession much better in, in serving our patients. I also have that at the end. So your patients are getting older, what to do? Uh, when I graduated from dental school, you know, we talked about ideal dentistry. Uh, at that time, the baby boomers was the big population. As the baby boomers have gotten older, they still are the greater population. So what are we to do? How do we treat these patients? We're going to talk about decay and oral hygiene in the geriatric patient tonight. So a reporter interviewing a 104-year-old woman and asking, what do you think is the best thing about being 104? I would have said, my, my response would have been, just to live 104, but her response was, she simply replied, no peer pressure. And that's a fact, at 104, I don't think you're gonna have much peer pressure, and uh, which I thought was a fantastic answer. So how do we find geriatrics are getting old? It's a good question. And by the way, I just want to emphasize that I am part of Catapult Education, and uh, Catapult Education, we have a Speakers Bureau and we also have an evaluators barrel. There's about 30 speakers and about 25 more evaluators. And what we do is we take materials from manufacturers and we evaluate they're passed out to all the participants. And if you ever want to become a participant, please go to catapult.com and uh, give them that information. But we pass that material out. It could be a composite that's on the market and the company wants to find out how we evaluate it or what the evaluation, how we, and we talk about handling, we talk about how it polished. This, this would be an example for a composite. So we do product evaluation. Then we have the, the speakers group as well. And again, just to remind everyone, tonight's webinar is sponsored by Perio Protect, GC America, and Pearl AI. So we'll talk a little bit about each one of those. So aging is not lost youth, but a new stage of opportunity and strength. This is Betty Friedman. It is a change in life. All of us will go through this if we have that opportunity to get older. And it happens, I have a statement that aging happens right before your eyes. And before you know it, uh, I swear I just got married yesterday, just graduated from dental school, and it has gone lightning fast. So Dominica Swear is a dentist and PhD at the University of Michigan, refers to geriatric population as those that are age 65 years of age and older. And she actually came up with a definition and she cataloged, recognizing that there's, you know, cognitive declines, chronic disorders, disabilities, and they become prevalent as we get older. So this is how she defined the subcategories. Young, old is age 65 to 75. Old is age 76 to age 85. Old, old is age 85 and older. So the question is, what is the fastest growing subgroup that we have today? And I would have guessed before I did the research and read her article, and it's, it's a recent article. If you get a chance, take a look at it. I would have guessed age 65 to age 75, but that's not it. The fastest growing subgroup today is age 85 and older, old, old. And I found that quite surprising because if you think of the baby boomers post-World War II and Korean War, it lines up with that. Back in the days, back in the 60s, if you had someone to live past the seven, age of 70, that was quite something. When I was in high school, my parents were in their 30s and I thought that was old. And so things have changed. Medicine has changed. Everything we see as a health profession has changed. So this new rapidly growing population over 75 are increasingly dentulous and therefore more exposed to the risk of dental caries and periodontal disease. 
So as we get older and as we become over the age of 75, there's certain things that shut down, such as our salivary glands. Also, our diets change. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. So the issue is these are high-risk patients in that they're more prone to the diseases that we take that we take care of every day in our offices, the diseases that we treat, the diseases that we see in this geriatric population. There's no question about it that there's a oral health and systemic health relationship. We know that. The bacteria that we see in periodontal disease and caries related to other systemic diseases. It could be heart disease, it could be cancer, it could be upper respiratory diseases, diabetes, adverse pregnancies. We know, for a matter of fact, that these diseases, they can originate. I call the mouth the gateway to the body. Recently, I did a comprehensive exam on a patient, and this is what she handed me when it came to the medicines that she was actually taking every day. There are literally, she had literally 16 medicines she took a day. There's something that I have noticed in the last few years is that we have a very tight relationship with our physicians. Practicing in Chicago and near the University of Chicago, it's not unusual for me to be on the phone with a physician for a patient two or three times a week. When you see that last patient that I just did that comprehensive exam on recently, finding out exactly what's going on with her systemic health. We need to make sure that we have this relationship with the physicians. We need to also take that extra time just to make sure if there's any treatment that we're going to render that we get it checked out. So conditions that can impact dental care of ger geriatric patients and this should be familiar to most of us. There's zero stomia in the middle. There's gum recession. We know, as I mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a reduced dexterity. We're gonna see root decay. We're gonna see overall physical disability and cognitive decline. You're gonna see patients that may have to have a caretaker. So what does this mean when you're treating these patients as their dentist? There may be situations that come up that they cannot stay in the chair very long. You know, they may not be able to maintain more than an hour or 45 minutes for treatment. So whatever that treatment may be, maybe it has to be broken up. Maybe you, will, you may not be able to do quadrant dentistry on some of these patients if it's extensive. That's part of the geriatric care. So if we look at this, can we all agree that geriatric patients often need our help. Remember, they're high risk. And this is not unusual to see. And when you ask the patient, did you brush your teeth today? They will say yes. But again, if they have cognitive decline or any type of change in their health that may affect them brushing their teeth, we see this on a routine basis. So for our geriatric patients in our office, they get vertical bite wings every year. And CBCT instead of an FMX every three to five years, customized to each patient. We look at their patient. If they have quite a bit of dentistry done, then we may do it every three years. We use CBCTs instead of full mouths. And it, it, for insurance purposes, it does uh, form a panel lead or panel like Rex. And we can submit that. But we do use a CBCT instead of FMX for a number of reasons. One is a comprehensive diagnosis we're able to see. And I would really promote that in your office. We, do, we use customized home treatment, routinely power brushes and water flossers, appropriate toothpastes, rinses, probiotics, remineralization periodontal carriers. We're gonna talk about that. The patients get are usually on a 4910 laser visit every three to four months and with pre and post rinses. We know that for some of these patients that there's gonna be some bacteremia that we cause when we clean their teeth. So we do a pre-rinse and a post-rinse. It's usually what is referred to as an IO, and that is IO rinse, if you look that up. There's gonna be varnish application. 
There's going to be customized approaches, as I earlier mentioned, to the restorative. And then we have an in-office dental plan. They, and as I mentioned earlier, they come in with a medical history. So every three to four months, we always find out if there's been a change in their medical history status. And we want to make sure that we address those bacteremias. So this would be a typical geriatric three to four months care. And we make sure that they are able, or someone, their caretaker, that they know how to brush their teeth and take care of them. And if we have them on any type of trays for remineralization, we definitely make sure that they know how to do it or that their caretakers do. And a lot of these people do come from senior homes. So we wanna make sure that they're accompanied by their caretakers or someone that can oversee this. So some statistics, 70.1% of adults age 65 and older have some form of periodontal disease. We know that. These findings were from the CDC. 70.1% over the age of 65. We, should, we have them use a power brush, but what does that do? There's our bacteriemia right there. So that's why we use the rinses. We also have, I, we used to use disclosing tablets. It goes back to even when I was in dental school, we would always use disclosing tablets as we clean people's teeth. But nowadays we're a little more fancier. We can actually see a lot more. GC introduced Triplac ID gel. We use this routinely in our office. And what it does, it can diagnostically assess new plaque, old plaque, and high-risk plaque. So you take, and these are the colors that it comes out. A pink red would be new plaque, a blue purple would be old plaque, and a light blue plaque would be very, very high risk plaque at a low pH of around 4.5. So how do we go about using this and demonstrating this to the patient? What we do is we simply brush on and surgically suction when rinsing. So we place it on the patient's teeth that have the plaque on it. We have them rinse, and then we have suction of that rinse. And these are the colors that we just talked about. So you can see there, there's new plaque, old plaque, and high-risk plaque that you can see here that we show the patient, and we show them how they're missing this when they're brushing. So you can see that we try to show them how to brush. And usually it is, as you well know, along the gum line, that this plaque is missed by their, their hygiene. So now we can recommend toothpaste, wrenches, brushes, additional suggestions such as dietary. We know that the geriatric diet usually consists of a lot of carbohydrates. They love their sweets, there's no question. And of course, we, we want to also apply the varnish as I mentioned early. So we use, we, it must flow, not discolor, and it has to be highly retentive. And we want immediate fluoride release. We utilize varnish in our geriatric patients a lot. Varnish is a, a very, we paint it on, we do that after their hygiene program. And the hygienist will brush it on and have them leave it on and not rinse for an hour. So these are the varnishes that we use. They're by GC and they're recaldent for remineralization. We use this at every three to four months. There's no question that this is very helpful for these geriatric patients for remineralization, especially if you have a high decay patient. So to show you a little bit in the business side, in a 49 week, week, 10 times a week, this can be very productive for the bottom line by utilizing varnish. If you don't use it, please take a look at that from a business point, but more importantly, from treating your patients. So again, 70.1% of adults age 65. Now, we all know reality is for some of the geriatric patients, this is hard to get off. So what are we doing? What are we doing different that makes a difference in getting this off? But we know what causes this plaque. We know that bacteria in the mouth, they're not removing the plaque. It's loaded with bacteria, the biofilm. So we know. So for years, what did we do? Then we went through a time where we would address this with antibiotics. 
And these are some of the popular antibiotics that we used back in the days. Today, I very seldom will use an antibiotic. Once in a while, it depends on the situation. Once, once in a great while, I'll use a Restin. But why did we stop using these? Real simple. The antibiotics have resist, the bacteria have become antibiotic resistant. We all know that, that happens. And the, this is a little cartoon that shows that the bacteria, antibiotics are ineffective. In fact, dentists are guilty of sensitizing patients to antibiotics. Just because the patients, the bacteria is resistant to it, and the patients, if it's a oral antibiotic, but of course this would be in the gingiva, such as Arrestin, they don't take the complete prescription. So we end up with a patient with plaque, with bacteria that is resistant to antibiotics. So as a profession, we must adopt new protocols for long-term maintenance for our patients who are at high risk for the systemic issues of periodontal disease. As a professional, we want to be able to deliver treatment that takes care of our geriatric patients and take care of all our patients to address the diseases that we see every day. For years, it was very frustrating because we would have them come in, we would sit there and preach to them, you have to clean your teeth, you have to floss. We all, some of us went through the Kai's method where we made sure that we showed the patient how to place the floss. Reality is it wasn't always the patient. It could be genetics, we now know that. It could be their DNA. It could be multiple. We know that there are multiple situations that these patients have periodontal disease and caries. We are very much aware of that. So what are you doing different in your office in the treatment of periodontal disease? Do you have these patients in your, in your practice? These are patients that you see every day. There's no question. How about these patients? So the question is with these two patients, your protocol, what is your treatment plan? Well, in the past, periodontal therapy. There's no question. Patient comes in. If you look at the lower patient, the super gingival calculus, you put them on periodontal therapy. You do some scaling root planing and perhaps some laser treatment. You give them hygiene instructions. Then possibly they would require surgery periodontal flap surgery or distal wedge, whatever the surgery was to, so the patient could have access to the keeping the pockets clean. And then you'd have them on maintenance. So if you take a look at this patient here, I want you to remember this patient, if you will. We'll come back to him. So we go from here, you can see the super gingival, to here, and if you look real close, around 24 and 25, you'll see a little mucus site, or not mucus, but real light haze. I'll point it out to you right here. And they end up here. How do we get there? How did we get from the first slide to this slide? Let's talk about that. We know it's all about the biofilm. There's no question. And here's the breaking news. What I consider as one of the greatest discoveries in the treatment of periodontal disease, and it also helps caries. The protocol that has made a difference. We as professionals, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, we need to have a protocol to make a difference in the treatment of this disease. Enter the world of Perial Protect. Some of you may have heard about it, some of you may not. I've used Perial Protect for 10 plus years. And it has made a huge difference in the way I treat periodontal disease. It's an FDA cleared prescription medical device that places a solution of the dentist choice in the sulcus or the periodontal pocket. We're gonna talk about how that happens. It differs, the tray differs from other trays in the mouth and that flexible materials custom form with a specialized seal. So, so many of the dentists, they try to make these trays in their office and it doesn't work because you, if you don't have the seal, you're not going to get the solution into the pocket. So how does that happen? 
If you look real close here around the teeth, you see a gasket. It's a real tight fitting gasket. And these gel trays, they cause the solution to go in the pocket by hydraulic forces. It's a real simple, I'm kind of, I always used to get upset because I didn't think of this. But if you look here, you can see that gasket. That gasket is the key. There's no question. So the key is overcoming the curricular flow with a gasket type seal along the oxygen releasing gel that will have time to work against the biofilm. I will pray and hope that any, everybody that listens to this tonight will call Perio Protect and start using this on their patients. Like I said, I have used it for o over 10 years, 11 year, going on 11 years, and it has made a huge difference. It has saved patients from previously would have been through surgery and has made a difference in my implant patients and also in my smile makeover and reconstruction patients. It has made a huge difference. So we talk about overcoming the curricular flow and in a healthy pocket, the curricular flow, the cleans out the pocket 40 times an hour. Until I started really looking into this, I had no idea. So then in an unhealthy pocket, it even cleans it out more. So it can enhance your hygiene success rate, supports the concepts of biofilm maintenance and long-term. It's definitely for our geriatric patients. I try to put almost every one of my geriatric patients on this. And it benefits caries prevention as the tray is used for both periodontal issues and caries issues. It's ideal for patients who have regressed from previous periodontal surgeries, and we've all seen those, or periodontal treatment. We refer to these patients as refactory. And as I mentioned earlier, just a little review that these are 4910 insurance patients. And it can also augment the success of your periodontal maintenance and implant patients. I do, when I do a consultation for an implant, implant patient, part of their treatment is they will be on periodontal protect. And then there's initial discussion on the patient, as I mentioned, of the implants. So this is the gel. It's 1.7% hydrogen peroxide. Dwayne Keller discovered this, and what does hydrogen peroxide break down into? The 1.7 breaks on down into oxygen. So we know that this gel, and we're going to show you here how do you place it in the tray, we know that this gel will break down into the pocket into oxygen. Such a simple and easy concept. When you take your impressions, you send it to the lab, the Perio Protect lab, and you get back this kit. This is the delivery kit, and it's pretty cool. And in our office, we give them the delivery kit with the two perio gel tubes. This is what the trays look like. They come back from the lab. And let me just say, I cannot stress enough, it is really, really important to take excellent impressions. You can take analog and you can take digital. So here you can see we're putting the Perio Protect in the tray and you just put a little bit. Now, some people just put about a drop in the second molar, a drop in the bicuspid, a drop in the anterior, and then they take the little brush and they spread it around so they don't overdo it. You do not have to put a lot in here. The trays must fit passively and have little to no movement. Each tray is loaded with 1.7% gel. So, is this something that you see? This is what we call the refactory patient. This patient had their teeth cleaned, they come in four months later. This is what we all see. We all see these patients. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating for the patient, the hygienist, and the doctor. And the patient will say, I've done my best to keep clean. So for years, we didn't have an answer for this, but now we do. So it dawned on us, Dwayne did the research and it dawned on us, what's the difference between a cut on the arm, and that's actually my arm, with a cut on the arm in the refractory patient with bleeding upon probing? And the answer is, what do they both need to heal? 
They're both wounds. We now understand that periodontal disease is a wound, no different than a cut on the arm. And they both need oxygen. There's no question. If we don't have oxygen, these wounds are not going to heal. So simple on the arm, you just keep it clean and oxygen gets to it. But how do you get it into four and five millimeter pockets? Through our Perio Protect. So if you take a look here and we take and look at our probing, everything that looks like candy stripes is over four millimeters. And the arrows indicate that they're bleeding upon probing. So here you can see this patient and you can see that this is May 1st. And if we look in the lower anteriors, this is what magnified, this is what that looks like. If we go six months later, look at that beautiful gingiva. Look at the keratinization. And there's one side effect of wearing this gel. It is excellent for whitening. And we always tell the patients, you're gonna have a side effect that your teeth are gonna whiten. And it whitens with no sensitivity because it's such a low percentage. So here is six months later, the probing. Now this for years is what we were trying to get to. And we finally, for many of us that's been using it for years, it has been a godsend. It really has been. And we, we like I said, all my reconstruction patients, I put on it, all my implant patients and geriatric patients, as many as I can. So this is the new probing six months later. Excellent result. If we look here, new patient. I want you to notice something. This is the probing. Again, bleeding upon probing, all the candy stripes, that's what we refer to. The red is bleeding upon probing and pockets for at least four millimeters. The orange ones are a little bit, are five over five millimeters. This is five weeks later. So if you go back, look here, look at five weeks. And you wanna know something? That patient was not scaled yet. So this patient, we took impressions, wore perio protect trays, they wore them. And remember in the initial slide, it said, remember that little white filmy at the bottom? Here it is right here. If you look, that's what it does to calculus. It turns it into mush. So when the hygienist or the doctor goes in and scales this, it comes right off. Ultrasonic, it comes right off with no question. And this is the new probing. Thus, the concept, a well-designed train that once filled with a low dose of hydroxyl to maintain our patient's periodontal health. So what it basically does is it breaks down the ability to debride the subgingival plankton cells, and it turns it into a defensive growth mode limiting their ability to reproduce or trigger inflammation. So it just changes the entire bacterial, the biofilm, the bacterial colony, and they become into the defense mode. It's real simple. Again, I wish I would have thought of it. So the gasket C allow the low dose to treat the pocket. We only do this, patients only wear them for 10 to 15 minutes. So the instructions are 15 minutes a day in maintenance. Now, prior to getting to maintenance, we may have them do it two to three times for a couple of weeks. It only takes a couple of weeks usually, or a month in some severe cases for them to get maintenance. And sometimes if it's bad enough, there's a couple of examples where we will make a new set once they reach that stage where there's the gums are beautiful, just because the trays don't fit like they did originally. And we just charge in our office for the lab fee to do that. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But most patients wear them daily when they shower, simply rinse them out afterwards and allow them to air dry, then brush their teeth. And the nice thing about it is it's a freshness. They really do like that freshness. So the conversion really happens in the hygiene operatory. And it requires the doctor and the hygienist to be 100% on the same page. This was actually introduced to me about 11 years ago by my hygienist who originally placed her husband on it when she recorded over 125 bleeding sites on her husband. She read about it, she took the course, and she put her husband on it immediately. And that's how I found out about it from my hygienist at the time. 
So then the assistants will scan or take the impressions. And again, I can't stress enough how important it is for these impressions to really, really be excellent impressions. And with digital scans, there's absolutely no reason why they can't be. Or with the impression material, I use Silgenet from Kettenbach. So the front team must be able to answer the financial questions. The hygienist monitors the results. And I really get a big kick out of watching these patients and I take a lot of photos as they go through this. So here's our impressions. And we can start with a putty wash with a light body on top of it. And this is our 3D printed models. So either way. So let's take a look at one of our geriatric patients. So this is Janina's and her chief complaint is that under her gums, she had sore under her partial and even the power brush. She wanted to maintain her teeth. She only had four teeth. And in that year, she had two gingival caries in one year. By the way, Janina's 93 years old. So this is her partial and this is her perio protectorate. She has four teeth and she doesn't want to lose those teeth. So in the office, we said, fine, we'll make you a perio protectorate. The teeth that support this partial will get oxygen and she will maintain a periodontal probing. Now, I want you to look at her lower teeth. Check out the hygiene and look at the fit on the perioprotect protect trays. But look at that hygiene, 93 years old. Unbelievable. The gasket seal to contain the medicament, the 1.7% hydrogen peroxide. And note, you can see here, you can actually see up close the bubbles that take place. So when we deliver these trays to our patients, our assistants actually show them and do it with them, place the 1.7% in the trays, and they actually put them in for 10 to 15 minutes the first time in the office. And then we show them how to rinse it, brush their teeth, and go from there. So here you can see the tight seal where the perio protect made a huge difference. We also will use these in implant patients, as I mentioned. I literally put every implant patient, as long as they cooperate and say they will, on this. Here's, here's an implant placed in 2007. It's tooth number 30. And if you look here, here's two years later, you can see some periimplantitis. So we place the patient on perio to protect. One of the things we can add to the perio protect hydrogen peroxide gel is vibromycin liquid and we spread it around with the brush, vibromycin will decrease osteoclast and increase osteoblast. And here you can see, if we go back from there to there, we see a difference. So this is the initial patient that we saw. And I said, please remember this. So one month later, okay, now notice for three weeks, the patient was on perio protect and had not been scaled or any type of debridement. So this is that patient prior to debridement or scaling. And remember I said, remember the little white film and I'll show you here with my pointer right around here that was here and here. This will now just polish off. So then we go to debridement, scaling root planing, place them back on their perio protect or maintain their perio protect. And here we are four months later. That's what we want. That's the results that we want to see with our patients with perio protect. This is the why. So big part of my practice when I practiced in Las Vegas was aesthetics. This gentleman was a security guard at New York, New York casino. And he came in and he literally had me in tears almost, but he had been to three other dentists telling them they had titracycline. This is fluorosis. In fact, he grew up in Oklahoma with well water. And he and his bride had been saving money. He wanted to get his teeth fixed. And he wanted to have a beautiful smile for their wedding in two months. Actually, it was three months. So he had minimum amount of money to do this with. And if it was up to me, I would have done it for free, but my team wouldn't allow me. So what we did was we put in my whitening for four weeks on the lower teeth. And we did a smile makeover on him. And there you can see the whitening on the lower. 
One year later at ReCare, he comes in. And by the way, his wedding day, he had over 40 people in our reception room. And his mother in tears came up to me and just gave me a big hug and thanked me. One year later, here he is. I was not a happy camper. You can see the inflammation of the gingiva. And you see the lingual photo here and the inflammation and the bleeding. Put him on perio protect trays. And two months later, there he was exactly the way that he should be. So there's no question that for those patients that, and he's a smoker, it's excellent for smokers. It's excellent for geriatrics. There's no question that it's excellent for those perio refractory patients that just come back in bleeding. This has been a godsend. This has been a change in protocol. So in our practice over 11 years, we use it on patients that have with laser therapy and yes, even surgery. Those are refractory patients. Patients prior to active therapy, patients ongoing in perio implantitis and maintenance regimen after implant restorations, patients with medical histories that want to reduce their inflammation, patients who want to bleach and have been too sensitive, high caries risk patients, zero stomach patients, our geriatric patients include MI paste, oral cancer patients with radiation ports. So over the past eight years, our practice has delivered 20% of the active patients perioprotect cases. At that time, we charged $375 per tray, digital 400, two tibs are included. So we assume a profit of $250 or 85K in three years. Now, the good news is, that was eight years ago. As of two years, the present fee is $450 per arch. And it's going to cost you about $190 to have the lab make these in your perio gel. So here are the insurance codes for there are insurance codes. We never promise patients that the insurance will pay, but these I'm just going to stall for a few minutes, hesitate, and let you take a photo of that. Okay. And what Perio Protect has done is they will give you your first case free. You give Megan a call and mention my name and you can go online and email at support at perioprotect.com or you can call them. I just want everyone to offer this to their patient. It will make all of your lives easier. You no longer have to prep crowns or any type of restorative with bloody gums. These patients will love you for it. We'll, I'll be presenting that at the end, that uh, slide. So geriatric patients, zero stomia. Let's take a look at that. The prevalence of zero stomia is 30% in patients over 65. There's no question. Just to give you a little history, over 30% of our practice are patients over the age of 80. So Dr. Graham started this practice about 30, over 30 years ago. But that is why the fastest growing population is over the age of 85. The prevalence of caries is greater than 40% adults age 65 years and older. There's no question. And in the elderly, they don't, we don't see fissure decays like we do in young virgin teeth, we see root caries. There's no question. Studies have shown that root caries in the elderly are predominant. And they begin in the vestibular and interproximal surface at the level of the neck. It's where they do not, the patients do not get it clean. They may not be able to get it clean. And again, the reason why we use our perio protect trays. When you add dexterity, large embrasures leading to food traps, aging dental margins, some of the PFMs that we know will leak, for instance, uh, and don't get me wrong, PFMs are still a, a good restorative uh, material, but we have better materials and better cements and better margin adaptil adaptable uh, restorations, poor hygiene, and we have a decrease in saliva zero stomia. Again, the poor diets, our geriatric patients love sweets. There's no question. So they're high risk 
patients. So what's the main problem with xerostomia? There you go. The ugly root decay. That's what I call it, the ugly. There's no question. It's not unusual when you have a patient over the age of 65, we see this. We notice that their saliva has decreased. This is what we see. And it's hard for many of them to keep this clean. There's no question when you start seeing patients at 80 and 85, this is what we're going to see. So the question is, how are we prepared to treat this? Again, we can use our perio protect trays. Dentin decays at a pH of 6.2. Enamel starts at 5.5. And then we have exposed dentin and cementum when we have recession. So we open up a site for disaster. This is what we see. And it doesn't take much. This patient could have been in six months prior. It's not unusual for us to see that. That this is six months prior in a hygiene appointment. We see receding gums and we see root caries. We all have seen this. This is not unusual. The patient just does not get it clean. And now you understand why perhaps that seal around that perio protect tray is important. This is actually a patient in our practice. Her name's Ada, she's over the age of 80. And this is what we see in hygiene. And then we show her the decay that takes place. And it's unfortunate because they come in every three to four months. I think Ada was out for more than that with COVID. She was out for a year and this is how we see this at our first appointment. So one of the tools that I will use is GC makes a saliva check. I want to know the acidity of the saliva. And this is also a good time for us to find out if they are suffering from xerostomia, if their saliva is thick and mucus. But I also want to check the pH of it because we can also offer them buffer rinses. You can offer them a fluoride rinse. And we definitely will be placing varnish fluoride at the point. But I use this on a regular basis to check these patients because I want to know what their pH is. And it's an excellent tool to have in the office. Also, in our perio protect trays, we're going to place MI paste plus for remineralization. We're going to be able to have these patients use our perio protect trays in the morning while they're showering, getting ready. And then at night, they're going to maintain this and wear this for about 30 minutes after dinner, and then brush their teeth. So GC just recently also introduced MI Paste 1 Perio that also fights gingivitis. And it fights, it will recalcify, and also at the same time, it will fight inflammation of the gingiva. So this was just recently introduced. I just got this about two weeks ago, and we've already started use, utilizing it in our geriatric patients that are care, that they can brush with it, and they can also place this in their perio protect tray. So here you can see that we've placed in the perio protect tray. What they have to do is they're going to dispense a pea size amount on the brush and brush for two minutes. X-ray and do not eat or drink for 30 minutes. So I have them just hold this in there. You know, I would like them to hold it in there for 30 minutes, but if I get 20 minutes out of them, and you can see here that the remineralization and the recaldent is very helpful in the studies that were done. So we're starting to introduce this to our patients at this time. So let's take a look at the high-risk caries. So this is an initial exam of a geriatric patient. It was a new patient that came in. And the patient had not been to a dentist in about four years. And so I went through my health history patient was healthy. The patient was in their 70s. And I asked them, we took a set of x-rays and I asked them about their diet. And they didn't at first want to talk to me about it too much. But then I kept pursuing it and saying, you know, how many, how many sweets do you have a week? How many do you drink soda? They do. But they also drink a lot of sweet tea. And then they do like their desserts. So when I showed them the amount of decay they had, then they realized that they had to change their diet. But 
this is not unusual to see on a new patient that has not been in the office for two years. We all get them and we have to have a discussion. One of the things that we now use is Pearl, the future of dentistry. It's AI. Prior to me doing an exam, whether it be a periodic exam, a comprehensive exam, we take our x-rays and we put them through an AI, Pearl. And the beauty of this is if I'm going in to do a periodic check with a hygienist, the hygienist has already put the x-rays if they've taken vertical bite wings for the year, once a year, they put them through. And I will show you here the beauty of Pearl because what it does is it alarms us to situations that the human eye may have missed. So what is AI? So computer systems that can simulate problem solving and decision-making capabilities of the mind. AI does not take the place, a lot of people think AI is gonna take a place of a human, not at all. But what it will do, it will also point out situations that we have missed. And this is the beauty of what we like about it in our office. So there's no question within five to seven years, AI will be an essential utility. And I will tell you also, insurance companies are also starting to look at this. And we're already getting insurance companies that notice the bone loss as it's measured as we send in our AI reports. So you take your 2D x-ray and you put it through Pearl. And this is what we see. This is our previous patient. So all we do is bring up Pearl. It will take the x-rays, put it through, and it will point out the decay. Now the pink means it carries. If you look on the left, right over here, you can see all the pink dots that are gonna indicate carries. And you can see here, the caries that is pointing out a little bit. Then I take that and I explain that to the patient. Now, why is this important? And why do we utilize it like this? Because this is the patient understands. We explain to the patient that we have an artificial intelligence. It's not human, but it is pointing out that you have decay there. So this is an unbiased opinion that points out to the patient that they have decay. And I love that about it because now it's not my opinion, but when I emphasize that there's decay there and that the artificial intelligence pointed it out, the patient understands and they have a better understanding of what they have. So here, now what it can also do is it can tell us what percent is in dentin and what is in enamel. And we point that out, the depth. So this is incredible information. So on this tooth, my concern is how deep that decay is and it can actually measure the distance between from the pulp to the edge of the decay. I love this. There's no question. So how does AI work? When it comes to 2D x-rays, the way it works is that the human eye can only see 30 to 50 different shades of gray, but artificial intelligence can see between 550 and 700 different shades of gray. So the smallest change in the x-ray, the AI can pick up. So is it 100% right? No, but it brings attention to that area that we may not, with our human eye, may not have been able to see. And I love that about it. It also can point out different tooth parts. Same x-ray here. You can see the enamel, the dentin, and the pulp. You see the root area, all different colors. And we can show this to the patient. So this is a, a different x-ray. And this is a, a filling that there's decay underneath. But look at the periapical area. This was a patient that was just in actually on Monday, this past, or uh, last Monday, I'm sorry, that I had to refer, patient came in, emergency and pain. And I just love this. It's easy to explain to the patient and it gives an opinion that is not human. 
and therefore it's not bias. It's a non-bias opinion. So in our next patient, this is a patient that came in and they had their previous x-ray sent to the office. So I looked at this patient, I did the comprehensive exam. I can see a filling there, but we can all see decay all underneath that filling. And here it is, I'm explaining it to the patient. And it shows 98% dentin and 2% enamel. There's no question that there's decay there. So when I looked back, I had the x-rays, they were digital and I was able to print, pull them up. And I looked back in the history of this too, the x-rays that were taken four weeks before the filling was placed, when I looked at the health history or the dental history, the AI shows that the incipient lesion is 100% in enamel. And here, if we zoom in, now, there's no question that if we presented this to 10 dentists, we may get 10 different answers. That's the beauty of AI. It assists us in decision-making. And here you can see, and also you can see the measurement of the bone to the crest of the bone, the pocket of the bone to the crest of the bone. That's what that measures. And that's what the insurance companies are really paying for on some of the periodontal therapy. We're finding that out. And here you can see the contrast. And if you notice on the right hand over here, you can see we bring up contrast. So there's different tools that you can bring up. And here you can see it in different parts of the tooth. So when I look at this tooth, and I take a clinical picture of it, here is the filling. So what caused this failure? One of the biggest part of my comprehensive exam, and it's just, you know, I, I would love every dentist to start when you do a comprehensive exam. One of the first things you consider is the occlusion. So this filling that was only two years old, less than two years old, you can see that it, it's failed. You can see the margins. In fact, the filling when I prepared the tooth literally fell out once I released the enamel around it. This is how this happened. There was no question when I checked the occlusion, the opposing cusp was plunging right into that filling. So the final restoration, are you adjusting the opposing occlusion? Sometimes we do. Here's the restoration I placed on it. And sometimes we have to, if you have a plunging cusp, don't be afraid to explain it to the patient and say, hey, you know, we need to adjust this a little bit and explain why. They understand. The other thing that Pearl does is it will also plot out planned treatment when treatment is scheduled. And that's what I also like that as an office manager, if you're an owner of your practice, you can see here that the plan treatment. And Pearl will also tell you on your daily schedule opportunities you have and also treatment that hasn't been. So it is also helps you in managing your practice. And here you can see plan treatment by doctors. I left my name visible. So if you have hygienists for hygiene and the doctors for restorative. So it takes care of a lot. Not only is it helpful in diagnosis, and explaining to a patient, which is called their second opinion, but it also helps you in the management part of it. This is the website. And if you go to Hello Pearl and you fill out information that you would like to talk to them, I would really, really push. This has been a fantastic addition to our office. We use it every day. We, every day in our morning huddles, we bring up the patients. We look at the patients through Pearl and take a look at opportunities, whether it be restorative or periodontal opportunities from previous x-rays and from treatment plans that perhaps the restoration hasn't been done. So you might also just mention that you are on the webinar tonight and that Dr. Tomorrow uh, suggested that you give them a call, fill out the information and they will get back with you. So major problems with zero stomia, back to root decay, the ugly as I refer to it. Again, dentin decays at pH of 6.2. Actually, I've got those backwards. I got, it's actually the other way around. I apologize that the dentin decays at 5.5 and dentin 
didn't hit 5.5. You need ammo at 6.2. I apologize for that. And this is exposed. Just caught that. Huh. So here's the pulp. We take a look at this patient. We have an issue. How are we going to prep that tooth? Are we going to come from it laterally? How are we going to protect the pulp? So now we can put this through pearl and give us the distance of that decay and tell us. But nobody likes doing these. So this literally took place last week in the office. I had a new patient uh, that I saw. It had been seen by a previous dentist. And the patient was on Perio Protect from a different office. And they came in for an exam. I did the exam. And lo and behold, what do we see here on the disto of the second molar? Most likely what that's caused from is perhaps a third molar. And the patient did, in fact, say that they had a third molar removed that was impacted. We see those on a routine basis. So the pocket on the mesial was eight millimeters, the pocket on the distal was nine. Now, placing a patient on perio protect doesn't mean that we won't have to do perio surgery. But my question is for periodontists, or if you're a GP and you want to do perio surgery or a distal wedge on this, or just a minor flap, I'd rather be doing surgery with healthy gums than bleeding gums. And so it's not unusual for those patients. And we don't say that Perio Protect stops you from requiring sur periodontal surgery, but I want my gingiva to be healthy. It's just like prepping a tube. So the question comes about, and the patient shared with me that the dentist said that they were just gonna monitor this and they were going to watch this decay. I have a problem with watching decay so I'm a little more aggressive. The patient also, due to their health history, could not have the tooth extracted and an implant placed with a bone graft. So due to systemic situation, we want to maintain this tooth as long as we can. There's no question. So I, I explained to the patient that this was going to be a difficult situation for me to get rid of the decay, but we were going to go after it. You see here, with an intraoral camera, I tried to catch the decay and it's just above the gum. But if you take a look with this here, I'm gonna to have to come down through here and that's gonna end up close to that pulp form. There's no question. So the patient's 69 years old. So the question is, I looked at it, could I approach this laterally? And how do we do selective caries removal? How do you protect the pulp? Do you really charge two surface for this? this it's gonna take a little time. We all know that. Again, we all see this. Step one of the preparation. So what I use in these preparations is I use a lateral diamond, a small cylinder diamond, and I make my initial preparation. And then I'll use an end cutting burr to protect me going laterally towards the pulp. Something that I started using, and this one really bothers me. <laughs> I did not uh, invent this. For years, many of us were taught to use round carbide burrs, usually a four or six, to remove decay. We were taught that in dental school at slow speeds. There's no question that most of us were taught that. Someone got really, really smart. And they said, you know what? If I make a ceramic burr that will not penetrate Calcified dentin will only re remove decay. That will be a good idea. And this is Comet Cerebur. This is what I use routinely to remove gross decay, all decay. And I turn down my NSK handpiece to 1,000 to 2,000 RPMs to do it. And I just want to really suggest that you pick the set of these up and try them. You will love these burrs. There's no question. So here's my initial penetration, trying to keep it very conservative. Yeah, I nicked the gingiva a little bit there. I had to open it up because the decay went buckly and lingually. And here you can see it. And here it is. And what you see there is just stained dentin that is calcified. Here's my final preparation. The question then comes in is how am I going to hold 
how am I going to place a matrix? Well, I went back to the days of the old amalgam Toffelmeyer matrix, and it worked like a gem. So here we see the prep. Now I'm going to protect. I want to place, if we take a look at this, I want to place a material that will be biologically beneficial to the patient. What can we do to protect this root, this exposed root from getting further decay, especially with a, a nine millimeter pocket here? So I turn to Old Faithful and, and I'm gonna elevate it with a sa open sandwich, what we refer to as an open sandwich glass ionomer. So I'm gonna place a glass ionomer in the cervical area down in that box first. How do I go about doing that? Well, first of all, I'm gonna take the GC cavity conditioner. And I really recommend you use this, especially if you ever do any type of root decay where there's been some resorption. We don't want to etch there that, at that situation. So what we do is we put the cavity conditioner on first. We treat it, let it sit there, scrub it in there for 20, 30 seconds, and then we rinse it. And then we can place our glass ionomer. Now, one of the problems with glass ionomers is a lot of companies have come up with glass ionomers, but they make it in a capsule form that you have to have the amalgamator. And we still hung on to ours. Actually, they will sell a different type of, if you want to go to that. But GC a few years back came out, as you see in the lower left with an auto mix that made life simple. So in this one, I did use the uh, amalgamation portion and I used the Fuji 2LC, like here. So I placed my prep conditioner and then rinsed it and dry it. And then I placed the G glass ionomer down in the cervical box. And here it is, like cured. So what I do is I mix it, I place it in the box, I extrude it, and I let it get just, let it set for a few minutes and push that down there. And there you can see is my glass ionomer. I bring it up to the level. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to either select a bench or total edge the rest of the area and apply my composite. So for my bond, I'm gonna use the Genial Bond by GC. And then I'm going to use the Genial Accord. If you haven't had a chance to use the Genial Accord, try it. It's a relatively new composite and it has full coverage styline coating and it allows you, it's strong as I'll get out. And that's why I wanted to use it here, especially in the molar, especially those patients that are clinchers and grinders, which are most of our patients as you all know nowadays. And so this material is really, really excellent material in the posterior area. But I also will heat my composite. If you hadn't had the opportunity to use heated composite, please take that opportunity because it flows. It's the difference between having like a mushy cheese or a hard cheese when you go to apply it. So with the Sarah Smart fillers, it's strong, it polishes nice and allows you to handle. The other good news, and these are the shades that it comes in, but we just remember originally when I talked about product evaluation, so Accord, Genial Accord got the vote of confidence in, by Catapult. And what that means is that we evaluated it for adaptability, handling, and also if we would use it in our practice every day after we try all tried it, and if we would talk about it, which I'm doing here, but there was a number of physical characteristics that we evaluated, shade, stability, curing, adaptability to the margins, and also handling. Those are just some of them. So it did receive a vote of confidence, which is good news. So here it is over the, the initial layer over the glass ionomer. And we tried, the beauty of this also, one of the evaluations is how does it, what type of chameleon effect to pick up the shade of the tooth and how easy are the shade matching take place. So here's the final restoration. And here's a distal view with the intraoral camera you'd see there. Uh, what happened was I tried to get a finishing and you see right here where the burr shank 
discolored my composite a little bit. So shame on me, I know. And here's what we started with. And here's what we ended up with. And you can see here why we have this patient on Prairie Protect. Now, a lot of people remember this patient cannot have an implant. This patient, due to systemic situation, cannot have an implant. So what is our job as professionals? I feel my job is to allow this patient to maintain this tooth as long as possible. The patient can have some minor gingival surgery once the Perio Protect gets these gums healthy. And we get this pocket down to four millimeters, maybe. No promises. But still, if you look, there's good bone that's in the furcation area. And, you know, what we did was we took care of that decay. Yeah, there's a little overhang there. But here you can see there's the areas of the light cured glass ionomer and the genial cord. Oh, shame on me, I know. But that's why the gingival was a little uh, bloody because I tried to get down in there, get that little nick. I just could not get it off. So again, the patient was very happy. And the patient hasn't experienced any sensitivity. I checked with the patient. And something that is really, really crucial for me is the anatomy in a tooth. We want to make restorations look like teeth. Those grooves are there for a reason. So again, if the opposing is flat, then I understand it, but I want to make mine pretty. So here's a situation where a patient broke off a piece of tooth and we use the genial cord to fix it up. Here, the patient has an open contact, but you can see decay there in our final restoration with an A2. And you see it matches the shade, that's immediate. So it's even gonna pick up more once it rehydrates completely. This material is very strong. I can't, I, I just very impressed at how strong it is and how easy it is to adapt. So talk about the typical geriatric cavity. Here we see it on the buckle, on a second molar, not unusual at all. It, now, I'm not sure if a previous restoration was in there, but definitely has an abfraction type lesion. So what are we gonna do about this? We're gonna take the decay out. And you know, there's a little stain left in there. It's not decay, just a little stain. I wanna be as conservative. I'm going to do a final bevel on the margins. And I'm gonna place the A4 genial cord. And I was very happy with this. It turned out very nice and uh, it helped the patient out a lot. They love you for it. So can you say typical geriatric amalgam? This is what we're looking at here. This is not unusual to see. Some of these amalgams have been in there 40 years plus, we know it. And this is what happens, is this. So we share this with a patient. We tell them that, you know, they're breaking down around the margins. There's decay that is existent and they want us to fix them. This happens to be in an elderly geriatric patient. If you look up close, there's no question. I just cannot believe that the mesial amalgam's not falling out. And this was the final restoration in that tooth. If we look at both of them together, sorry, I couldn't get a better focus on it, but I'll tell you, one of the struggles that I have is taking nice photos on some of the geriatric patients. It's you know, they've been in the chair for a while and they're fidgety and they're just difficult to get. But here's an A3 and you can see it, this uh, accord picks up very nicely. So I wanna share, take a few minutes and then we have some Q's and A's. I wanna share what really makes us tick. And I want you to all to listen to this uh, video. So I would like everyone to meet Lucille. So Lucille is a new patient in our office today. So Lucille, I have a question. What is your age? I will be 98 in October. Okay, and Lucille, you have all your teeth still, don't you? Yes, I do. And you have, do you have any problems chewing? No. Okay, so you, you told me, I was amazed at how well you look and just everything about you. I was just amazed. It's just, you're a beautiful person. So 
And then you proceeded to tell me, what did you recently stop doing? Uh, well, it, uh, a few, uh, couple of years, let's see, in uh, nine, uh, when I was 92, I stopped playing tennis. And why did you stop playing tennis? I was having problems getting my friends to play. They had all kinds of complaints. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you a question. If I asked you to go out and play tennis, would you go today? Well, no, I would because you wouldn't? I I don't see that well. Okay. I, I wouldn't see the ball. And I, <laughs> but you'd have no problem getting to the ball, would you? I might. Okay. And I, I just, this walker I'm only using because you're two blocks away. <laughs> I don't, I have it parked in my apartment and I don't use it the rest of the time. Lucille, let me tell you something. I mean this from my heart. As a dentist, this is, patients like yourself is truly what keeps us going. I absolutely love this. You are just a beautiful person. <laughs> So I hope all of us have that experience in your own practice that, or, you know, that you come across a patient that's 98 years old, that still played tennis a few years back, but has all their teeth. And, and that's what really as professionals makes us tick, for me at least, is that the opportunity to be able to enjoy, experience a situation like Lucille and be able to provide the care that they want and you know the care that they may need so the question is one of the first if you remember a previous slide are you going to stay on your old treadmill we talked about perio protect tonight and we talked about access to different protocols to help our geriatric patients we talk about saliva ph we talked about different scenarios that perhaps all of us should take a look at and change our protocol and it's out there, it is available for us. And we also have the materials. And these patients, with when we share with them and we show them, whether it be with AI or just share with them with photos, they want to be healthy. And there's no question that if you, you have to change your protocol in your office, because again, the growing, fastest growing population is over the age of 85. So, Here's the situation. Patients are outliving their teeth. There's no question about it. What are the protocols you have in place in your office to treat geriatric caries and periodontal disease? I certainly hope this presentation has opened some avenues for you to start thinking differently than you are. So again, please take a look at Perio Protect. By doing the training, you get your first case free. You can do it on one of your team members, or maybe you have a patient as a hygienist that you would like to be able to do this on, sign up with Megan, tell Megan, hey, I saw Tony, Dr. Tomorrow talking in a webinar, he told me to give you a call, please fill me, fill me in on what we have to do for training, because it's, it's literally a one hour, uh, it's usually lunchtime Zoom meeting where they go through the protocol, and also take a look at Pearl. Go to www.hellopearl.com and there's some information. I'm here to tell you that, and we know for a fact, and here's, here's the statistic. On the average, the offices that have Pearl and they have been keeping track have seen an increase in 37% in the restorative procedures that are done because Pearl brings it to your attention and the hygienist's attention before you even come in the room. So I want to thank Perio Protect for sponsoring us tonight and giving us this opportunity. I want to thank Pearl and I want to thank GC America. I want to thank them all for being, allowing us to be able to put this on tonight. So here's my email address. How about some Q&As? Here's a question. I work at a nursing home part-time. How can you use this in memory care residents in dementia? We have patients with dementia. I'm actually involved in, if, I don't know if many of you know this, Lou Rubel Brain Center in Las Vegas, where I practiced for 18 years. And uh, it's, a, it's 
the headquarters for the top research center run by Cleveland Clinic for Alzheimer's. So perio protect is excellent. It's just that the caretakers have to, to be placed in this. And they're, you know, sometimes it depends how bad, unfortunately, the uh, dementia is if the patient will tolerate it. But if it's early stages, this is excellent. It really is. And the beauty of the, you know, is the hard part is getting the impressions, but hopefully they're still going to a dentist that they uh, can take impressions or do a scan. That's going to be the hard part. And also if they can maintain it, but it is an excellent, excellent way of taking care of this. Cost of Perio Protect from impression materials dispensed and what is charged to the patient. We, in our office, we charge $900. We give them the kit that you saw there and it costs about 190 bucks, let's say $200 to make it at the lab and also for the two tubes. So we charge the patient 900. Now that doesn't mean you have to charge 900. I know offices that charge 700, 750, 800, but that's what we charge. Do patients, we don't see sensitivity, seriously. We do not see sensitivity. It's 1.7% it will use Imperial Protect. Would it be a good idea to do a debridement around the cervical area before doing impressions in order to get, you know, you can do it either way. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but I like, again, taking the impression and just watching the uh, calculus, if they have the calculus, just fall off. So, you know, it depends how severe the inflammation is. If they have 140 sites of bleeding or whatever, and their gingiva is swelling and you just barely touch them, just pushing on it. If they're bleeding, what I call bleeding like a sieve, then I'm going to take an impression. I'm going to do a scan and I'm going to put them on perioprotect because I don't want to do a blood. I don't want my hygienist. I don't want to have to, if it's an emergency, you know, unless it's an emergency and I have to take care of decay, but I don't want to have to prep with blood. So I'll put them on Perio Protect before even gross debridement. So it, it's entirely up to you. CBCT or AI. That's a cone beam, is CBCT and AI is um, artificial intelligence. I did that today also. Place GI. Great. Open sandwich. Also, you can use glass ion over in a closed sandwich. What that means is you use it as a base underneath. Now remember. GI, if there's a mild pulp exposure, or you may think there's a pulp, you do not use glass ionomer. Be sure to place your calcium hydroxide. Charlie Cox, who recently, unfortunately, just passed as one of the top pulp biologists, showed that glass ionomer with fluoride will irritate the pulp. Paul, what is, about Prevident? We, use, we used to use a lot of Prevident, and there's times where patients that we used it with, we still use it. But Prevident is excellent in those trays. Good question, Paul. Can you wear so hydrous peroxide diluted with water? We don't promote that because when you start, I don't promote that. When you start doing that, you can, but then patients start using it straight and we start seeing all kinds of irritation in the gingiva. I know for years, a lot of us did it, but the 1.7% with a perio protect. How long and often can you use Perio Protect? So once we get the patients into maintenance, and that'll be part of your training, is once they're in maintenance, they will literally uh, do the Perio Protect for 10 to 15 minutes in the morning before they brush. Uh, and uh, they will do it, take them out, rinse them, brush, and that's where they get the cooling. Now, before maintenance, in other words, if you have that patient that is swelling, inflamed, bleeding, then we're going to have them do it twice a day. So part of your training with Perio Protect, they'll explain all that too. So I was trying to do go over a lot. So let's go into chat. Okay. Can it be used as an alternative in patients? Oh, wait, let's see. Let's go to the top here. Would you not get the same effect since the gel is delivered directly into the sulcus and it stays on? What's, I'm not sure. So the key to that is that gasket. So the gasket around that tray is what really engineered, has been engineered to force that. It hydraulically forces that into the curricular fluid, into the pocket. To It actually flushes that out. 
So please don't make your trays in the office and try to do this. It doesn't work. We, it comes up all the time. Veneers, how did you make his teeth white? So it's funny. I practiced 18 years in Vegas. And when you do a smile makeover, a full mouth reconstruction, everything's white in Vegas. I was blessed to be able to actually have a practice where I treated a lot of the performers, but everything is white. When I came back to the Midwest, I practiced 26 years in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and before I went to Vegas. And when I came back to the Midwest, I tried to retire, but I missed it, came back, nothing's white. So it's more natural. How did you make this teeth white? On the uh, one patient that was the guard at New York, New York, uh, we actually bleached the lower teeth with cores, and then we he wanted white the veneers. Going back to the case of the DL rester, you mentioned ideally the tooth needed to be extracted. No, I didn't say ideally. If the question that comes up, here's the question. If this patient was 69 years old, so with an eight, nine millimeter pocket, are you better off extracting the tooth? The question that comes up, clinical decision. Do you extract the tooth and graft an implant? The question is, what's going to give you, what is more predictable? There's no question that if you could do an implant, I probably, in most cases, would graft, extract the tooth, and graft and do an implant, especially with a nine millimeter pocket. But due to systemic situation, the patient couldn't have an implant and grafting. So I want to try to maintain this tooth as long as I can. Thank you for a great present talk. Can it be used as an alternative in a patient with severe sensory? But once why? Yes. Excellent question. We talked a little bit about that. Okay. There's some excellent questions. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Again, you have my email address. Uh, please don't hesitate to email me. I try to give an overall view of how we, some of the geriatric treatments we do in our practice. And I truly do enjoy these patients. They really, they are so thankful. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of explanation, but guess what? If you're in dentistry, you're going to see these patients. As I mentioned, it's the fastest growing population. So the, here's a question. Would it be a good idea to do a debridement around the cervical? You can, but it depends. Again, as I mentioned, same answer is that if you get a patient that hasn't been in for a number of years, that has inflammation, and you have, you know, sub and super gingival calculus, you just touch their gums and they're bleeding. I'm going to put them on perio protect tray first. And even, uh, you know, and then we just charge for the lab cost for the second set of trays once they're on maintenance, because you get the inflammation goes down and the trays don't fit. The gasket doesn't fit as well. And you'll learn all that with your uh, training. 